neighborhood I lived in, which was on Knob Hill, and is a more affluent neighborhood, even in that neighborhood, I started to notice more and more people who were sleeping on the steps of churches. I was really struck by that. It kept going through my head, like, what, what could I do that would be something that I could, you know, have some sort of impact on this or comment on this? I thought about, you know, what if I did these signs that said home on them that had a flower in it? And I ended up creating 250, painting 250 signs that said home on them, and then started distributing them to people mostly in the Mission District. So there were folks who were either had been evicted or were in danger of being evicted or who were living on the streets. And I gave them the home signs to either put in their carts or to put in their windows as a form of solidarity. From that, I ended up doing two murals on Clarion Alley. I really loved that direct engagement with the public. You know, people would come, they would ask what you're doing, and then it was an opportunity to talk further to, you know, what is this about? What's going on? What's happening in the community? Yes, and it's referring to the apartheid that is existing, that Israel is imposing on the Palestinians right now. So the process for the production of a mural on Clarion Alley is there are a number of ways that murals, muralists, artists, um, organizations are selected. So because we are now 28 years old, we've been, you know, we are very engaged with our community and we know the organizations, artists, community members that we're interested in working with. And then it's painting the mural. So we support, we provide stipends for materials. Um, we have ladders that we store in Community Thrift, who's one of our community partners. The mural is up and then often, or if we're able to, we will have a community celebration to go along with it. The mural work that I do, I often use, it's, it's pretty much the same format. It almost always has text and it is accompanied by very bright pop flowers and other imagery that birds, nature, has these other elements along with the text. And I use that strategy as a way of drawing people's attention so that, you know, it is beautiful, considered beautiful, or something that's, that's interesting design-wise that people draws people in, but then has this other greater message. My newest work, the last mural that went up on the alley, is a mural that same format, large text, bold text, flowers, and it says end apartheid BDS, or it started with end apartheid BDS. And BDS stands for Boycott, Divest, Sanction. It's part of a group of murals in support of the Palestinian people on the alley. There's five murals total that have continuously, over the past year, but now been hit 16 times with hate crime graffiti. And um, I just had to repair the last hit. Probably unexpected outcomes for the perpetrators of this hate crime is that we have to be on the alley to repair these murals. <laughs> Therefore, when a lot of folks are there on the alley, they ask what we're doing. They ask about what the murals are about. So that's an opportunity for us to have those conversations and do public education that is, has been very positive. What I hope that people take away from my mural work is to think about the messages, think about what they're looking at, and also to have a joy in it as well, which is why I do create this work either with beauty or with humor, and have that full range of an emotional experience because that's who we are, you know, that's a human experience. My message to aspiring young artists is to always be true to yourself. Don't second guess yourself. Stick with your integrity and stay true to who you are.